On December 16, 2017, he knocked out Ricardo Lamas at UFC on Fox 26. Tremendous knockout. Exactly six years to the day later, he knocked out Bryce Mitchell in the first round of his fight at UFC 296. We're talking about Josh Emmett. He's kind enough to join us right now. There he is, Josh in the house. Did you know that? Exactly six years ago, on that same day, December 16th, you knocked out Ricardo Lamas. I did. Um, yeah, sorry, I lost my voice over the weekend. But uh, yeah, my uh, actually one of our good friends, uh, Jesse, her birthday is December 16th. And uh-huh. one of my good buddies, he's like, He's like, you keep fighting on Jesse's birthday. Um, and so that's why they couldn't make it to uh, to Vegas for this one. So it's actually the fourth time I fought on her birthday. I, I fought Holtzman. I fought Lamas. I fought, I want to say, was Ige around that time? Maybe it wasn't the 16th. But yeah, so it uh, yeah, I was aware of that, though. That is incredible. Yes, uh, Holtzman, you beat him in uh, 2016. Oh, no, that was December 17th. So it's around the same time. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But that is a fun little factoid. So, of course. Okay, so then you knew that. By the way, um, why did you lose your voice? Was it because you were celebrating? No, I, I don't know. I think it's just being in the, the casino for, you know, a week, all the smoke. And then, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of screaming and celebrating and uh, just having fun with uh, friends and family and, and and not a whole lot of sleep. Right. But it's in the back. So sorry if it's hard to understand me. No, no. All good. All good. Um. Can I ask, how were you feeling going into that fight? What, what were you feeling? What was going on in your mind? Um, as you mentioned, tough year for you, but you're fighting the best of the best. You're fighting the guy who, you know, was about to fight for the belt uh, in a number one contender fight. You're fighting the guy who's going to fight for the belt next year. These are the top guys at 145, um, and you were in there with them. And so going into this one, third fight of the year, after dropping the first two this year, what were you thinking? What were you feeling? Man, I, I was... Uh... To, to be honest, I was, I was just, uh, I, I was so ready. Like I, I've been training so hard and I I've been getting back to the, the training that got me into the UFC, you know, working everything, getting back to my wrestling, getting back to my jujitsu instead of just boxing. So I was well prepared. Um, I didn't care who I was fighting, even though I went from a, a world-class striker to a world-class grappler on a two week notice, you know, I, I just had to make some adjustments uh, believe and, and trust in the process that my my coaches were watching a lot of film and and you know they're, they're world class coaches so all we did was critique a few things and uh, come up with another game plan and you know it was it couldn't have gone any better to be honest it was a a way to go out you know the end of the year and I'm really looking forward to 2024. Did your confidence waver? Were you were you feeling a little bit down on your skills considering earlier in the year what happened? Uh, no, not at all. You know, I, I just, I got away from what got me to the show and, and I found success with just a lot of striking and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I needed to get back to my roots and, and that's why I want those fights back too, because I feel like if the, the way I was prepared for this last fight, I, I can beat anyone. I just, I need to stick to that. And, uh, and that's what we're going to do here in the next year. Coincidentally, it was the striking that, that put, Bryce away and you didn't really get to show too much of your game because the fight ended so quickly uh can I just ask before we get to the actual fight when you went from Giga to Bryce um were you, were you obviously you you said you were down to fight anyone but were you okay with this did you like this did you feel like it benefited you did you feel like it was a better matchup for you what were your thoughts yeah I, I don't know if it was a better matchup uh we we had a completely <laughs> different game plan but um yeah, I, I really did not care. You know, I, I, I did not care. Um, like you said earlier, I'm fighting the best guys in the world. Um, I want to get back to that title shot and uh, I, I should be able to beat anyone. So I, I just went in there confident, just focusing on myself, uh, trusting in my coaches in the process. And uh, yeah, we it, it went perfect according to plan. Um, best case scenario, you know, it's, right. I, I, I didn't get hit once. I didn't even break a sweat. <laughs> And, um, yeah, it's like, just, it, it's insane. It was, it was one of the biggest cards of the year. Donald Trump was right there. There was a lot of celebrities in the crowd and, uh, you know, I, I think it's knockout of the year and it, we got knock out of the night. Can you describe what that punch felt like when, when you connected? I mean, it sounded 
like a bat hitting uh, like a, a piece of wood or a bat hit, hitting a ball? Like what, what did that feel like for you? You punch him and he goes out like that. Yeah, it's, it, it's what we train for, what we hope for. That I, I did my job. You know, I, I went in there and I, I know I got criticized from some people uh, for for celebrating and and man, that's what I'm supposed to do. That's why people buy the pay per views. That's why people buy the tickets. They they want to see that type of violence, and I deliver that every single time. Um, yeah, when I when I did connect, um, it. It's like if, if you've ever played baseball or you, or you golf, you know, when you just swing perfect, you know, it's effortless and you just connect, you know, the the golf ball or the bats going out or I mean, the baseball's going out of the park. And that's exactly what happened. I, I hit him so hard and flush and clean. I could just feel it in my hand. And then I, I just saw him, you know, kind of falling face down. And, and, and that was enough. I was not going to follow up with any unnecessary um, punches. I, I've done this several times. I, I think it's so much sweeter with a, you know, walk off KO. Right. Did you really receive criticism for that? Because that blows my mind. You're in a massive fight, big win for you, a weight lifted off your shoulders. You just hit him as clean as can be. You're allowed to be happy. I mean, like, I don't think anyone can truly put themselves in your shoes. I, I didn't think that you were not classy or rubbing it in. Like that was a moment where you, you, you let it all out. People gave you shit for that. Yeah, it, it, I think it's it, it's like we can't win no matter yeah. what. You know, it's a, I did get quite a bit of stuff. And what? Because I, I was saying it's hard to it's hard to celebrate when I see someone in that position. Uh, but everything's moving so fast. It's like it's uh, fighters understand this because it's we're going in there. We're fighting for our life, our livelihood. Anything can happen, and it's it's like these raw emotions and and. I did what I was supposed to do. I, I want to have the the biggest, you know, knockouts. I want to be exciting. And, and I went in there and delivered. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, I was excited. So I let it all out. And then by the time I, I look back and I, I see what he's going through, I, I take a knee and uh, yeah, wish, wish him all the best. And yeah, he, he's doing well. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for the outcome. But as soon as we get in the octagon, we're both trying to achieve the sure. same thing and do this. So I'm, I'm going to do that every single time I step foot in the octagon. What, what were you thinking when you saw him? It was a bit scary to see him convulse like that. What were you thinking? Yeah, I was, I was just wishing him the best. You know, I, I was, when I saw that, I was like, damn, that's bad. Cause it was, it was a brutal, brutal knockout. And, um, all I could do is just wish him the best and, and pray that, um, he's going to be okay. And he, and he came back to shortly after. Have you ever seen that before? I, I have not. I I, I, I personally have it. I, I've never seen anyone kind of convulse. Or I, I'm not sure if he had, was having a seizure or what what it was, but um, yeah, it, it, it all worked out in right. the end. Um, on the broadcast, I don't know if you've watched it since uh, Joe Rogan and I agree with him 100. percent Was saying like, why isn't he sitting down? Why are they walking him around and not just having him sit on the stool? Because it seemed like his legs weren't quite there. Um, have you have you watched that? Have you seen that? Or were you seeing that when you were in the cage? And I'm just wondering, as a fighter, were you thinking the same thing? It did seem weird. He was trying to leave, and it just felt like they needed to sit him down for a minute. Yeah, I saw his uh, Bryce's rebuttal vid- video just thanking me and, and and him thanking Joe Rogan as well. And then, um, yeah, Joe was talking about how like he cannot walk down, and he was, he was saying, like, sit him down on the stool. And luckily that the uh the commission helped kind of carry him down you know he was uh he was supported by them and you know luckily they walked him back backstage and got him into the the ambulance and that's when he said he came back to you know when he was in the ambulance going to the hospital he doesn't remember anything um it is yeah it's it's a it's a scary thing um to have happen to you but man the guy's back working already in in arkansas he's back building his barn like he he is a he's a one of a kind and he, he's truly a, a genuine good person and, and man it's it, it's hard to fight someone like that too because when we were backstage my my boxing coach joey rodriguez and i and then his coach you know him and i are just talking and uh he's just i don't know he's just 
he's just such a good person. And then the next day when we're going to fight, I run into him in the, in the hallway and he comes up to me and he's like, God bless you today, brother. I'm like, man, how am I supposed to go punch this guy in the face? But he, so it was, uh, yeah, I wish him all the best. This is you seeing him in the hallway in the, in the hotel or something like that. Yeah. On fight day. Oh my gosh. Is that awkward for you? Like, would you rather not have any interactions with your opponent? No, I, 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 I honestly don't mind. It's it's work, you know. I'm, I'm literally just going and clocking it in. So uh, whether someone's disrespectful or someone's, you know, respectful, um, at the end of the day, as soon as the the cage door is locked and and the ref says, "Are you ready to fight?" I'm going in there to uh, inflict pain on my opponent. Um, you know, I saw the uh, I saw the photo that you posted of of comparing you to Muhammad Ali standing over. I believe it was Sonny Liston back in the day. Uh, did you put that together or did someone send that to you? Um, someone sent that to me. Um, and, and, and I wasn't comparing myself to Muhammad Ali. Like there's like, I'm not even in that conversation. So I know, um, just that, that pose, like right. as soon as I saw that picture, uh, standing over Bryce, that reminded me of that Muhammad Ali standing over Sonny Liston. I was like, oh, that's, cr-. it's just the, the moment is iconic. I was by no means comparing <laughs> myself course. to Muhammad Ali. Like he's the goat. Um, but just the actual photo reminded me of that. In the immediate aftermath, I knew we were talking about celebration, but were you, um, were you reluctant to fully celebrate without finding out what happened to Bryce, was it a little uneasy in, 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 you know, the, the locker room and all that until you were told like, he's all good. Yeah, it, no, exactly. It's, uh, man, we're, we're all trying to achieve the same thing. And so it's like, I, I wish no harm on my, uh, my opponents. I, I hope we all go home to our friends and family with no injuries. Um, and yeah, it, it was a little tough just cause I, I wanted to make sure he was okay. And he got, you know, he got cleared. It was like a, a few fights after us. He was, he was okay. Um, I heard through, um, someone with the UFC staff, I just asked, but, um, yeah, everything was okay. And, uh, yeah, we went on to, to have a, a, a good night, um, with our, our team and, and friends and family and everyone that made it out to Vegas. Uh, before your fight, uh, your friend and teammate Cody Garbrandt had a great performance as well. Were you watching that backstage, and that did that give you a bit of a of a boost going into your fight? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. You know, Andre Feely. That's right, uh, Andre friend. as well. Yes, of course. We just had yeah, him on Monday. Andre, Andre, uh, you know, a teammate and friend and training partner for over ten years of mine. Andre started us off with a a first round knockout. We were wa- we were watching that at the hotel, of course. Uh, super pumped. And then we were in the same locker room. It was it was Cody, Andre, and I. So Andre came back after all his media obligations. And then we were in the locker room with Cody. He was warming up, looking sharp. Uh, he went out there, first-round knockout. So I was like, man, I have to get a first-round knockout. I have to get a first-round fi- finish. It was just a good omen, good vibes. And, uh, yeah, went out there and uh, kind of sealed the deal. There was a card, I think, in 2013 in San Jose where TJ – Benavidez and Mendez all got great finishes. And this reminded me of that all these years later where the alpha male guys all went kind of back to back to back with great finishes. I don't know. I don't know if you were uh, on the team back then. Do you remember, you remember this card that I'm talking about? I think it was like UFC on Fox seven or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've been with uh, team alpha male since uh, your eye opened his gym in 06. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so, and, and another one that reminded me of this is when it was 2019 um, Andre got a first round knockout. Um, he fought Shaman Mariah. Uh-huh, yeah. And Uriah got first round knockout over, um, yeah, I forget his name. And then, I, then I got a first round knockout over Bechtick too. So same type of thing. We all got bonuses. Um, and, and, um, every single time Andre and I have been on a card together, we, we've won. So it's like him and I are undefeated. My pro debut, um, Andre and I were on the same card. Wow. We won. We won in Poland. We won in Sacramento. So we, we've been saying it all fight camp. Andre and I are like, hey, for one, I'm undefeated on the West Coast. And uh, anytime Andre and I are on the card, we, we're undefeated. So we're like, hey, we're going to keep that 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 ball rolling. And this uh, is going to be no different. Undefeated on the West Coast is a great little factoid. So do you want, do you want to stay on the West Coast now? 
hundred percent. You know, I, I've been saying that I, I just want to fight in Vegas. I want big fights in Vegas, uh, the fight capital of the world. So who makes sense next for you? Whoever's going to get me to that title shot. I, I, I think I have, this is my last run at the title. I, man, I'm, I'm doing everything I need to do. I'll fight whoever I need to, to get to that title. Um, I would like to fight someone in the top three, you know, number one contender, whoever it is, just to get me there. Volkanovski and Ilya are, are fighting in February. Man, I, I want those, uh, in a perfect world, I'd want the winner of that. But I know I need to fight someone in the, the very top of the crop to, uh, to get back to where I was earlier. Who do you think wins that fight? I don't know. It's uh, it's tough to predict fights like that. It, it's hard to bet against the champ too, because Volkanovski is such a dominant champion, and he continues to evolve and get better with each fight. But then again, Ilya is a uh, man. He's he's tough. He's he's hungry. He's young. He's he's super talented. Um, so it's like I could I could argue how both guys win, but it's. It's just such an intriguing matchup, and it's a it's a fight that I'm I'm really looking forward to. Do you think the knockout loss to Islam will change Volk? No, I don't think so. You know, he he has a, a good head on his shoulders, and he's he's probably right back in the training. He just got caught. You know, it, things like that happen, and um, you know, Islam is a he's a, a big big guy, and. You know, Volkanovski will be fighting at his uh, around his his weight now. You know where I think he belongs, and so I think I, I don't think it uh, affects him or changes him. Um, I think he'll bounce back really well, and so that's why I am I'm so excited about this fight coming up. Is it better? It's in for, Anaheim. Yeah, it's in Anaheim. Yep, you gonna go? I would like to. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, not too far. Little little quick hour flight. Right. So maybe I will. Is it better for you if Volk wins? Because cause you're a fresh opponent for him? Possibly. You know, I, I do feel that if Ilya were to get the nod, then possibly Max would, you know, jump in there. Um, if Volk wins, I feel like I'm one of, yeah, like just that matchup stylistically, you know, I think it, it's such a good matchup and we're we're pretty similar. So I just feel like, yeah, it would be it would be good, but at the end of the day, it's up to the UFC. So whatever they want to do. Last thing on Ilya, was he better than you thought he was going to be? Um, no, I, I thought he was. You know, I knew he was good, and but I want that back. You know, yeah. I, I really want that back just because the way I felt for this fight, maybe, it, yeah, I, I I just felt phenomenal, and and now I'm. I'm just kind of back to my roots, and uh, trust me, I I want that back. So that's all I'm going to say. Fair enough. Uh, you versus Max feels like one that makes a lot of sense. Would you be interested in that? Of course. You know, Max was uh, besides Volkanovski. I think you know he's he's one of the the best featherweights of all times. That that was Max's position. But I just feel like Max has beat everybody. You know, the only person that has his number is. Volkanovski. So he is the number one contender. He's cleared out pretty much everyone in the division and fought everyone in the featherweight division, but myself, uh, I would be an honor to fight him. And that's, <laughs> that's like a sure shot to the title. You right. know, go there and I beat him. There's nothing left, but to fight for the okay. title. So if that's what the UFC wants to do, Hey, let's do it. W would you agree that that's the one that probably makes the most sense for you next? Yeah, I, I would agree because I, I want to fight whoever is going to get me to the title shot. And that is, you know, Max, he's the number one contender. Yeah. Um, he hasn't fought since late August. You said you didn't break a sweat. Would you like to get back in there relatively soon? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm going to talk to my management and the UFC and kind of see what's what's on the horizon, what they want to do. But yeah, I'm, you know, I'm back home. I'm going to get back into training this week. And, uh, yeah, take it from there. Okay. You think, uh, you think by the end of next year, you, you finally get to fight for the belt. That's the plan. 2024 is going to be my year. I'm going to win a fight and then I'm going to win that title. All right. Well, I wish you the best. Good luck to you. Congrats on the win, Josh. Really impressive stuff. Uh, you have terrifying power. I know you said hardest hitting featherweight in the world. Hard to disagree with that when you see a knockout like that. So 
well done. Uh, well done on not punching him on the ground. I know that, that you know, we sit here and talk about like, oh, you should have... It's, I know you guys are like a freight train out there and it's hard to pull back. So well done on doing so. Uh, enjoy the victory. Happy holidays and looking forward to a big 2024 from you. Well, thanks, Ariel. You have a good Christmas and, and New Year. Thank you so much. There he is, Josh Emmett, coming off that huge knockout win over Bryce Mitchell. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.